the fruit crop update will focus on um, how to select a muscadine cultivar uh, because I think that it's time for some interested growers to place their orders for fall for plant material and uh, we're looking at those relatively newly released muscadine cultivars and um, probably they can benefit from the information that we're seeing about those cultivars in our central Alabama location. So um, everybody around knows that uh, muscadines are a very popular, uh, very favorable, favorable, uh, favorite crop for uh, the population around, and uh, no wonder because they're native to southeastern United States and uh, pretty well adapted to the hot and humid climate around, um, unlike many other crops, fruit crops that are considered exotic. So they're having this uh, resistance not only to different insects, but different diseases. And uh, most of the cultivars uh, of muscadines are resistant to Pierce's disease, this uh, bacterial disease. Um, they're also a very good candidate for organic production. And uh, in my personal opinion, probably the best candidate uh, for organic production in, in our states on, uh, on the fruit crop side. They're very productive and versatile. They can be uh, consumed fresh. They can be processed into juices, pies, jams, jellies. And uh, we're also having this growing um, um, binary type of industry uh, in our states. A lot of um, vineyards are um, processing their uh, crop into in different types of wines. What we need to keep in mind um, when we're planning to grow uh, some muscadine cultivars. Um, one thing that comes to mind, this is their pollination biology. Unlike grapes from um, Vitis vinifera and American and French American uh, hybrid, bun hybrid bunch grapes, um, they are requiring pollinizer very often because they're not all of the cultivars are self-fertile. So um, we're having in production in cultivation two types of uh, muscadine grapes based on their pollination biology. And uh, some of them are considered to be female or self-sterile. And you can look at uh, the picture of Pam uh, here, which is self-sterile. Um, regrettably, uh, most of the large berry um, type of cultivars of muscadines are self-sterile and they would require a pollinizer to go with them for successful production. Another type of muscadines are those that we call perfect flowered or self-fertile. And a good example of self-fertile uh, muscadine cultivar is Noble that you can uh, see here on the picture. Um, why we need to be planning ahead when we're growing muscadine cultivars? Because some of the cultivars, like those that are considered female, uh, they would require a pollinizer to be uh, planted um, together. Um, and um, it's even considered that planting two pollinizers for one cultivar in production would provide better results. But then what do you do with the crop of the fertilizer cultivar? So all of this needs to be planted. And also, um, current breeding programs, especially at the University of Arkansas and University of Georgia, are taking those features of muscadines into consideration. And uh, they're focusing to develop new and improved muscadine cultivars. And one big uh, purpose of the breeding program, my big goal of the programs uh, right now, um, is developing muscadine cultivars that are perfect flowered. So they wouldn't, recon um, wouldn't um, need to have a pollinizer planted with them. So this will facilitate uh, the growers uh, tremendously. 
Um, with that, the University of Georgia has recently released some type of new cultivars of muscadines that are having uh, those qualities. And um, we uh, acquired those cultivars and planted them in our Central Alabama location and the Chilton Research and Extension Center, together with some of the most advanced um, muscadine selections from the University of Georgia and University of Arkansas. And um, um, on the list here, we're having uh, those released cultivars that we're looking to evaluate together with uh, Supreme, which is we are using Supreme as, uh, as a control cultivar uh, that uh, we can compare the performance of each of the cultivars with Supreme and see which outperforms Supreme. Today, I'm going to um, share some data from the last season um, that applies to those recently released cultivars because they were planted in 2019 and uh, they started producing their commercial crop last year. And our advanced selections were planted later, so uh, we expect to see their first commercial crop um, this summer. With that, um, I will go through the season uh, according to the season of ripening of all of those muscadine cultivars. And uh, the first one that I'm going to mention is Hope. It was released in 2014 uh, as a self-fertile and large fruited cultivar. And uh, it is reported to be one of the earliest varieties that farmers can pick beginning in late July. Um, this cultivar tastes sweet and can be picked early and produces a very attractive color that uh, reportedly the consumers in the Southeast prefer. This is uh, the crop um, that, will, that we saw on haul uh, in 2022 summer and fall. And um, this uh, cultivar was harvested um, initially on August 18th, and we continued harvesting until 1st of September. The total yield um, was um, kind of a surprise for us. This was the largest among all of the cultivars in our test, and um, the crop per vine resulted in 61 pounds per vine. This is pretty good. The average berry weight was 11.4 grams. So uh, every berry that is larger than 10 grams uh, is considered to be large fruited. Sugars for whole were 16.5%. Then uh, we are having lane uh, that was released in 2012 as a self-fertile and large fruited cultivar as well. Uh, this is um, the first early ripening blackberry cultivar. So if you are a fan on the blackberries um, of muscadines, here is a good choice for you. Uh, Lane is large fruited, but smaller than Supreme. Um, we found the um, average berry size to be like nine grams, slightly below 10. The vigor was moderate, moderate um, for, for the vine, and uh, yield was also lower than Supreme. And as I mentioned, Supreme is our control cultivar that we compare all others uh, or the new materials. Uh, and uh, it is better um, producing than the female cultivars, though. Um, Lane has the tendency to split and tear during picking and form this uh, what we call wet stem scar, which is um, not very good feature if you intend to store lane for a longer period of time. Lane was, the, or the first um, ripe berries of uh, lane uh, were ready to be harvested again uh, in, on August 18 in 2025. Uh, 22 and continued until um, August the 25th, so relatively short um, harvesting time in 22. Um, the total yield was about half of that of uh, whole, about 33.5 um, 
five pounds per vine with average berry weight of 11.1 grams, so really large berry. Sugars for lane was again 16.5%, so pretty sweet. Another very interesting choice would be Rasmatas uh, muscadine, which is actually a hybrid between muscadine and European or Vitis vinifera grapes. It is so fertile, but it is also a seedless cultivar. It is different from other muscadines in terms of it could be harvested on clusters. So, because the berries on each cluster, they uh, ripe uniformly. Rasmatas is also uh, very continuously fruiting along the shoot, so it can form up to 24 clusters per shoot. Um, but again, uh, remember, those are small clusters with really small berries. Rasmatas uh, is sweet and tasty, and um, the uh, flesh uh, is kind of uh, having this crisp texture. So uh, it's uh, more like um, vinifera rather than muscadine, where we having, when, when you um, kind of bite on, on this berry, uh, it is um, not crisp. And um, um, of course, the skin of rasmatas is very thin as well. Uh, it is reported to be highly disease resistant and because the plant is relatively or could be grown in a relatively uh, smaller area, uh, it is um, very conducive for uh, being grown on different patios or smaller spaces that a homeowner might have around the house. And here is what we saw in 2022 uh, for Rasmatas. Uh, the harvest started on August 18, and uh, we cluster harvested uh, this cultivar, as you can see on the picture, the entire cluster was ripe. Total yield, of course, is relatively low, only uh, 5.6 pounds per vine, and the berries were the smallest berries in this experiment, only 1.1 gram on average but Rasmatas um, produced the sweetest berries in last season and had uh, the highest sugar content of 17.3%. We have included Eudora in this experiment because um, yeah, it is an earlier uh, release uh, from USDA in uh, Poplarville, Mississippi, but uh, we haven't had this in um, research trials, uh, so we decided to um, compare it with other cultivars that are now available. So Eudora um, pro provides in general medium to high yield and berries are large, 10 grams on average, with high percent dry stem scar, which is a wonderful uh, feature for a muscadine grape. Uh, but Eudora needs to be planted with a self-fertile cultivar or two of them because uh, it has those uh, female uh, type of flowers. Eudora can be cluster harvested uh, because it has um, this type of uh, even uh, berry ripening. So that's why we were interested to test uh, Eudora and um, harvest in uh, 2022 season began again on August 18. A total yield was pretty high, 55 pounds per vine. And it was actually the second largest after uh, the crop of whole that had 61 pounds per vine. Average berry size was considered la large, uh, 10.6 grams on average, and sugars were 16.6 grams. Here is the Supreme, our uh, control cultivar. Um, it also requires a pollinizer, uh, so whoever is interested needs to keep that in mind. Um, the harvest in uh, the previous season uh, started on August 25th, so um, a little later. Total yield of Supreme was 33.8 pounds per vine, uh, and Supreme had the largest average berry weight, 
17.6 grams on average, a real uh, winner here. Sugars, though, were a little lower than for the other cultivars, uh, but still relatively high, 15.4% for Supreme. Then we were looking at this Southern home, which, which is also a hybrid between muscadine and some uh, French grapes. Uh, Southern home is so fertile, uh, has small to medium berries, berries. It has a very good flavor and crisp flesh texture. It could be very good for homeowners and for your landscape because of Southern homes ornamental qualities. Uh, for example, this cut leaf pattern, uh, it looks very nice uh, in the landscape. Southern home is also resistant to berry rot diseases, um, and there are many of them, uh, but some of them to mention, black rot, bitter rot, ripe rot. It is also resistant to xylella fastidiosa that causes Pierce's disease. We started harvesting Southern home on August 25th of the last year, and total yield was um, pretty high, 36.5 pounds per vine. Um, but uh, Southern home had the smallest average berry weight. Sugars were pretty good, 16% uh, on average. And here at the end of the season, uh, we had uh, our oak, that was uh, released in 2017 uh, from the University of Georgia. Again, this is uh, from the Self Fertile Muscadine Cultivars series. Um, it ripens mid season in Georgia, obviously. Um, it has uh, large berries, uh, on average 15 grams, and um, has this long pedicel, which makes the cultivar uh, or the berries easy to pick. A poke also uh, is reported to have dry stem scar, which is a very good uh, trait for uh, muscadine cultivar. Berries are significantly larger than other self-fertile cultivars. And again, does not need a pollinizer to produce large fruit. Poke um, was the latest ripening cultivar in our experiment last year. Uh, the first harvest was conducted on September 16th and continued until the end of September. Yield per vine was very good, 29.55 pounds, and the average berry weight was 16 grams. Um, Polk also had those sweet berries with 16% sugars in them. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'll try to answer questions you might have.